Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at the feature race at Saratoga on Sunday. Here's the field for the better talk now. We're going a mile on the inner turf. $120,000 is the purse for three-year-olds, which have not won a sweepstakes at a mile or over. We've got a field of eight. Chad Brown is the morning line favorite. Sifting Sands three to one. Sifting Sands certainly was not the favorite last time out. How does he pay $58 at Saratoga, Chad? Yeah, it was surprising. I mean, obviously, he just got a little bit lost in the shuffle there um, versus a, a big field of horses. Still surprising to see him go up at that price, considering in his prior start at Woodhaven, he did not get a good trip or ride. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. The five dreamers disease is a fast horse. I would think he's going to make the lead. Wolfie's Dynaghost is also fast. I think Wolfie's Dynaghost will try to rate off of them this time around. Ranger Fox stretching out in distance should be close as well. The pace should be solid. Yeah, I mean, you don't often get fast paces up here, so we'll see what happens. But I, I do think there's a chance this pace gets solid. And, and that's mostly dependent on Wolfie's Dynaghost. Um, boy, I mean, I think they tried. He made his turf debut last time, Dan. I think they tried to rate him. He didn't really want any part of that. Um, we'll see if he settles better this time. The number one Ranger Fox was knocking on the door after two narrow misses going into his last start at Belmont, and he kicked it down. Let's watch that race on July the 10th, going seven eighths of a mile. He received a very nice trip as the favorite. He sat the pocket, he gets to the outside, he makes the lead, he does what a favorite is supposed to do. He earns an 85 buyer speed figure. For him, it's all about distance and whether he's this good because he's stepping way up in class. He's stepping up in distance of furlong. I think there is some ability here, though. Yeah, I mean, the distance, I guess, is some kind of question. I'd be more worried about whether or not he's actually a stake source. Um, he won very easily last time. You can see the replay right there. Sat a perfect trip off of a million to one shot, took over. It was a pretty suspect field behind this horse and at the end of the day Danny didn't really improve that much off of his prior two turf races and personally speaking I hated his prior two turf races I didn't see his excuse either time first time turf for the number two Dr. Jack going out for trainer Todd Pletcher stakes placed already this year on the main track uh, I wish this horse had a little bit more turf in his pedigree he has a strong pedigree he's I believe a half brother to Idol who won the Santa Anita Derby this year Pioneer of the Nile does good work on turf 14 percent I just wish there was more on the bottom I feel the same way about him I think this horse actually has a little bit of talent I'm a little surprised that they're going to make this surface switch with them here I guess I'll just find out if he can handle two surfaces I think he's better on dirt Wolfie's Dynaghost was a very impressive winner in an off turf race two starts back and then they ran him in the Hall of Fame he was bet down to seven to two in that race he pressed a solid pace and he tired were you disappointed with that effort I was, um, you know, listen, they were, I think just, you know, he has a big turf pedigree. So I guess they were just trying to find out. And obviously making your turf debut in a grade two race um, isn't going to be that easy. I was just disappointed, Dan. It felt like Irad was trying to get him to rate a little bit. He didn't really want to rate. He pressed the pace. Personally, I didn't see, you know, any point in that race um, around the track where I felt like he was going to win. Um, I just, you know, he certainly didn't improve on turf. I think this horse is really good. And I think he's really good on dirt. I'm not surprised they're going to give him another chance on turf, but now I'm starting to wonder if he's just not going to be better on the other surface. Very quietly, the number four Danzig with the stars has really improved for trainer Dom Shatino, who's having a nice meet from limited opportunities, including this victory, both victories, as a matter of fact, with Danzig with the stars. Let's watch this race three weeks ago at the spa against New York Reds. He's got a long way to come turning into the stretch, Mike. He gets there. Yeah, he comes with a nice run. That's Stan Hope on the lead. Stan Hope has a history of blowing uh, stretch leads uh, when they stretch him out in distance. He really wants to sprint. But I don't think that takes away from what this horse did. He ran another good race here. Um, and his win two back was actually very good when he broke his mid. He did not get a great trip in that race. I'm a fan of the five dreamers disease, Mike, but I have a feeling that if he's going to win a stakes on turf at Saratoga, it was going to be last time out. And let's watch that race. The New York Stallion Series, his first start as a gelding. He has a clear lead at the 316s pole. I don't think he had to go very fast to make this lead, 48 and three and a half. And a nice horse, a very nice horse, Step Dancer runs him down, but this field is probably a little tougher. Yeah, I mean, I thought he ran well in here. You're right. Maybe he's supposed to win here, but look at Step Dancer, Dan. I mean, he's coming like a yeah. car through the stretch here. Um, I think he just got run down by a pretty good horse. And, you know, he was, you know, five or six clear of the rest of that field. Maybe this is tougher, but I don't think he's meeting any killers here. I think he's dangerous on the lead. 
If you're looking for a horse coming off a tough trip, how about the six? In effect, this is a Calumet Farm homebred coming off a third place effort in the Hall of Fame. Now let's watch that race right now. In effect is last on the rail, turning into the stretch. And as you see, there's just nowhere for him to go. Eventually, he's going to follow the number two, the odds on favorite public sector who streaks through down along the inside, but in effect never got a clear chance to show what he could do. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, he did get to save a lot of ground in this race, but it seemed pretty clear from a long way out that Jose Lascano's plan was to follow public sector. And once he got stuck in that position through the stretch, he just didn't really have any any choice but to stay in behind him and wait for him to clear. Um, not saying he was going to win there, um, but maybe it cost him something. I think he ran well. And I personally was a fan of his leading into that race. Then I think he ran some really good races on the way there. The well-bred straw into gold, I think, has some ability. He's really yet to put it all together. I look at his last race against New York Reds, and I wonder if the wide trip cost him. I think that's fair. Um, you can say he he was trip compromised last time as the favorite. Um, that being said, um, it still leaves him in the Too position bad. now of having something to prove because he was pretty good early on. Um, his race in the Manila it wasn't very good. Yeah. That was a very slow pace. He sat right up close to it. And he, to me, just didn't look that good in that race. Maybe he's better than that. And here's the morning line favorite, Sifting Sands. It's interesting to note that Sifting Sands is two for two with Lasix. And both times without Lasix has not run well at all at shorter prices. And of course, he's going to have to run without Lasix in this race. But let's watch the big 28 to one upset for Chad Brown and Manny Franco on July the 24th. Sifting Sands got a nice trip in here, gets to the outside, is able to find the split and is very game down to the line. He is a really good trip in this race for him, though, in a big field. And, and others behind him weren't quite so lucky. There, there were some compromised horses in this race, but... You know, still, this horse did what he had to do. He got a nice win. He earned a figure. To me, he's going to be pretty hard to take as the favorite this time. Um, I'm not saying he can't win this race, but do you really want to bet him at a short price? The top pick time for the better talk now, Mike. I agree that I don't want to bet Sifting Sands at a short price, and I'm not going to play him at a short price. You're going to get a good price on the six, in effect, despite the trip that we saw last time out. This horse appears to be coming into this race in good form. And best yet, if the pace plays out as expected, who knows if that's going to happen ever in New York. But if it plays out as right. expected, you're going to get something to run at. Yeah, that's the, those are all the reasons that I took him, Dan. I'm hoping that he stays around that morning line price. And I'll just give him one more chance if he does. I don't really like this field that much. I really wanted to give Wolfie's Diagos one more chance. I remain a big fan of his. I guess I'll use him, but I'm going to go 6-3. I tend to agree with you that I'm not really enamored with the field overall. I think it could come down to trip. I think Ranger Fox is going to work out that pocket trip breaking from the inside. And we'll find out how good he is. Mike's going yeah. 6385. I'm going 1487. It's a better talk now at the spa on Sunday. Good luck.